He's Maurice Jones-Drew, former UCLA running back, and of course, now with the NFL Network, great NFL running back as well. You got any recruiting stories for me? If you, you know, no names, but <laughs> did you? <laughs> That's how we're going to start this off. You're not going to just ease me in. <laughs> yeah. You just go start it off with the tough stuff. Huh? Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. I'll ease you in here. Uh, you can see the NFL Network analyst Maurice Jones through throughout the week on the NFL Now, available at nflcom slash now mobile app. Uh, this Sunday at 9:30 a.m. Eastern, Bills Jaguars for London streams live on Yahoo and all the uh, digital services. So, without naming names. Give me your, uh, give, me <laughs> like your it. give me your recruiting stories here. You got one? I, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, my recruiting was a little bit different because when I was coming out of school, Colorado was kind of going through that scandal. And so uh, a lot of the schools that I had uh, uh, obviously took visits to kind of cracked down. So um, the biggest story I guess I had recruiting was we just – uh, at, at, at the University of Colorado, it was like I came during finals week, so I went with my mother, and uh, <laughs> we went to the Cheesecake Factory with the coaches. It was it was it was one of those ones where I was like, I just guess I just I was born at the at the, the wrong time, you know. Wait, wait, Mojo. That that's that's your worst story is Cheesecake Factory. I'm t- I'm telling you, it was. You got to remember, Colorado had went through that scandal as soon as I got out of school, so. 2001, 2002 was when that whole thing was going down, and that's when I was coming out of school. And so everyone in the Pac-12 or Pac-10 at the time were kind of, you know, nervous, and they made sure everything was, like, tight and you couldn't do anything. All right, give me the best story that you heard about a recruit. Uh, To be honest with you, I mean, the, just the ones that you – you hear crazy stuff, but you can't believe any of it because you weren't there. So I don't, I don't try to believe any of the nonsense. Well, give me an idea just how crazy, even if it's just, you know, rumor innuendo. Um, let me think. Is, 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 you, t- you got me going back. Hold on. Okay. Um, oh, I got a good one for okay. you. Um, me and my buddy, we went to SC, and they had us go to this Greek restaurant where they do, like, belly dancing and stuff like that. And um, all of a sudden, they started smashing plates everywhere, <laughs> right? And so, you know, me coming from where I came from and my buddy as well, we weren't used to smashing plates because, you know, you do that, you're going to get a whooping. <laughs> and so uh, it was a kind of one of the first times I've ever got a chance to smash a plate, a pretty expensive plate. So it, it was pretty fun. That was probably the, the most exciting story I could tell you. Man, that is crazy. Without snitching. Wow. Oh, you don't want to snitch? I'm not a snitch. You know that. All right, that ain't my DNA, man. Well, snitches get stitches, of course. That's right. That's why I'm trying to keep this face as pretty as possible <laughs> for as long as possible. Man, have you led a crazy life. You got to smash plates at a Greek restaurant, and you went to the Cheesecake Factory in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Welcome welcome to the real world, you know? <laughs> no, that's not the real world. That's real. That's life, man. That's what people <laughs> people want to believe. You want to watch uh, ballers, ballers on HBO and believe all that nonsense. And that's not how it really goes down. It's all TV. Wait, you didn't have any ballers episodes in your pro career? Not at all. God. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. Okay, I, when it I was watched Jacksonville. that show, I turned it off because it was a complete lie. Fabrication. Even when you got to Oakland? Oh yeah! Even when I got to Oakland, it was no, it was nothing like that. <laughs> Unbelievable! So ballers is fiction. Yeah, pretty much. It's like Goosebumps. Uh, it's by like the way, the Goosebumps movie was that uh, Petros's uh, dad who owned that Greek restaurant? I, I, it could have been. I don't know. I don't remember. It was in a Universal Studios. It was a long time ago. Yeah, USC uh, running back uh, Petros Papadakis. He's. Uh, Radio host. I think it was his dad that had this Greek restaurant where all the USC recruits would go. I didn't know you got smashed plates, man. Yeah, right? Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, that's the excitement of my recruiting trip. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Now you see why I went to UCLA. And and there was nothing at UCLA? Well, the thing with UCLA was you all the tell coaches me. from Colorado. No, I'm going to be honest with you. All the coaches from Colorado went to UCLA. That's why I went because I originally committed to Colorado. And so when all the coaches went, all the sanctions went with them. That's how I broke down. <laughs> telling you, man, I, was, I just blame my mother for conceiving me in 1985, man. <laughs> if it was 1983 or 84, I would have had some stories for you. <laughs> You'd have been killing it. Yeah, I would have been in the game. Uh, have you ever had a moment like the Colts had with that so-called punt formation? You know what? Never have I had a moment like that. Um, 
I, it, I get what uh, Coach Pagano, what they were trying to do. They were trying to find a way to steal a first down, and uh, especially in a game like that where, you know, you're competing against one of the top teams in the league. You want to like be aggressive in a certain fashion, but you have to make sure you're execute you're executing that thing well. Like you should be able to do that and walk through, you know, make sure that everything's on point. You just don't throw a play out there. Again, I don't know if they've done that or not, but it whatever happened, there was a communication error where that guy snapped the ball because you're only supposed to snap that ball when there's like two guys over the center. You just throw it to them, and the guy they just outrun everybody to the pylon. But um, New England was prepared and ready for it, and that and that there was crazy. He's Maurice Jones Drew, the uh, NFL running back. Ended up with, uh, I think, eighty one hundred yards, right? Somewhere yeah, it was around there. Close. I was, I was right there, man. It was close. But don't you like? There's part of you like ten grand is a great number. It is. It is. Now, it, I, part of me was like, yeah. Another, then more of me was like, nah. I'm cool. <laughs> uh, we've seen the um, uh, Craig Ironhead Hayward's son. Is you know he wanted to do the tribute to his dad wearing the eye black, and right? The NFL says they'll ease up on his fines that he can pay tribute. Um, what do you think of tributes by players? I, I think that's huge. You know, this is this is the most watched televised game uh, in the world, and so obviously, and we'll talk about that later about what we have going on uh, with the Jags and the Bills, but. Um, whenever you can give awareness, and I think that's what he was trying to do. His dad died of cancer. He wanted to give awareness. It's, it's cancer month, right, breast cancer month, so he wants to give awareness, and that's that's what it's all about. I mean, D'Angelo Williams is the same way. His mother passed away from cancer, and he wanted to wear pink throughout the whole year, and the league told him no. I mean, I, I think if guys are, want to do that, you should allow them to do that. That's something they're trying to give awareness. They're trying to help out a cause that affected them um, fully. So, uh, again, I, I'm all for it. You but know, you can't when, pick and choose, though, Mojo. You, you because uh, let let me go. Let's say you want to pay tribute to somebody uh, with religion. Let's say somebody got shot by a cop, and you want to put Black Lives Matter and make a statement on your. Oh, I, I, I've done that before. But you, they didn't trip, though. I just did a celebration. They didn't trip. Wait, what? Do, wait, tell me what you did. Well, I, the last touchdown I scored, I did the hands up, don't shoot gesture in Oakland. We were in Green oh. Bay in the preseason, just to give again awareness. I mean, let's be honest. Um, in, the, in this world, you know, it's different. It's different for obviously guys like you, and then where I grew up as well. So, I grew up in a rough area where these things that are happening have happened. Yeah, and. You know, if it wasn't for social media, if it wasn't for all these other outlets for people to, like regular people to be able to get out uh, their their message out, we wouldn't have known about these things. And so I always feel like it's, regardless if it's black, white, purple, orange, green people, when people are, unarmed people are getting killed, it's senseless. And so I definitely wanted to go out there, especially raising three young black men in this world. I wanted to be able to, you know, put that awareness out and let my kids know that, you know, sometimes you're treated differently, which is a shame because it's 2015, but that's just part of this world. We have to understand that. I understand the gesture. I understand why you'd want to do it. I'm just looking at it from the NFL's perspective of that they have to pick and choose, and I think that's where you can't do a a blanket, hey, everybody can pay tribute to anybody they want because I do think that we're going to run into some gray area there and then, well I, well, I think if someone passes away, though, you know, if it's a family member like a mom or a dad in these in these certain cases, I think that should be qualified. You know, like if my if my mom passed away, I would I would want to, you know, show my support for her and 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 whatever that disease or whatever it was that caused that that sickness to to kill her. So, well, I remember when Peyton Manning wanted to wear black high tops to honor Johnny Unitas. And uh, here he was playing with the Colts. Johnny Unitas played for the Colts, and the NFL said no to that. So they, they've they said no to big names. Uh, and They're, gonna, they're always going to say no, though. You know that. Yeah. That's what they do. But let's get back on track. I want people to really tune in to this thing, right? Because you have my Jaguars, who are the number six offense in the NFL right now. And are you, all, are you see- all in on the Jaguars? I'm 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 a huge Jags fan. Now I'm I'm a realist. I'm real. I'm like I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm real. I don't think we're you know I'm not gonna be like we're gonna go 16 and 0. Obviously we can now, but I mean I I think they've shown great improvements and great strides. I I would like the quarterback to stop turning the ball over a little bit, but he's still pretty that, good. Bortles is is a, he's he's a better than average quarterback though. 
He, I think he is, but he gets a lot of he he gets a lot of stats in the second half of games when the games are kind of, you know, a little out of control. But I still feel like they have the right pieces there. They just need to, they just need to continue to grow. They need to have consistency. You can't. You a lot have of to have about patience. Firing the coach. You and have I think to have that's, mojo. You got to have patience. You have to have patience. You have to. Now, you can watch the Bills Jaguars from London, streaming live on Yahoo across all digital services, including online, any browser, and through the Yahoo Sports app on uh, Android, iOS, uh, connected TVs as well. Could you see a team? Do you see a team in London? No. Would you want to play in London? No. You want to know why? Two things. One, it's expensive as hell there. Yep. I've never, I mean... Taxes and everything, that is crazy. Yeah. And it's all going to one lady. And she's winning. <laughs> right? I, I don't think it just goes to man, the got, queen. Man, I've seen her house. I've seen her house. I don't think it's a that's house. It, <laughs> I've seen the palace, man. I've seen where she stays. I've seen her crib. It's huge. Right? And then, two, you just have the travel. Is The travel to the across the Atlantic is one of the toughest things I've ever been a part of. And that's just a tough flight. And, and I, I get they're trying to figure out a way to get teams to go uh, to play multiple games there. But I think it's a, it's, it's a competitive disadvantage. And so if they do that, they'll find out that year that that team will be worn down. There's just too many miles you're putting on the body. Why don't you um, wear a crown this weekend as a protest? to the queen getting all the money in London. Oh, I, I, you should check me out on at NFL Now. I do a segment called No Disrespect. I think you'll <laughs> like it. No Disrespect on NFL.com? NFL Now. Oh, yeah. NFL Now. No yeah, Disrespect. Yeah, called No Disrespect. Because pretty much you can say whatever you want as long as you preference No Disrespect before or after you say it. <laughs> the person can't take offense yeah, to it. I always like when, hey, I, you know, uh, I, I don't want – no, I don't want to take offense to this or, uh, you know, I, I'm going to apologize sort of this up front. I, I love you, but, and then they rip, they rip right. you after that, right? Exactly. And that's what I ask. This is kind of something that, that me and my buddy has been doing for a while, and I thought it'd be a funny segment. So I just try to take all the crazy things that happen in the league and, and just t- rip guys to shreds. But I say no disrespect, so you can't. You can do upset. that to me. Next episode, you can do that to me. Okay, I got you. I'm no disrespect, you but then if you want to put me on blast or whatever you want to call it, go ahead. I got you. Right. I don't know, though. I want to be in a movie, man. Throw can a little you, shade on me. Do you have an agent that you can send me? Because I, I want to go in the movies business. Cause I don't have, since I'm just doing TV now, I want to, I want to go mm. all the way in. Yeah. No, you're not, so you're not going to share? If you got up to 10,000 yards, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah, how about some shade? How's it feel? No disrespect. Uh, there you go. Now I can't be upset. <laughs> I was a little upset before, but now as you said, I, I'll take that. Okay. I get it. I will ask Sandler if he would consider. That's it. Just consider. How tall are you? Uh, depending on <laughs> the, the shoes I wear, I range from 5'9 to about 5'7 and a half. Are you taller than Tom Cruise? I, I've never seen him before, but I'm assuming because I can't get on couches and jump like that, like he did a while back. Would you ever? Would you have ever done that on Oprah? If you if you went on there and Oprah I, said, if I went on Oprah, yeah, I would pro- almost do anything. Really? It's Oprah. I mean, she's a she's like a. I don't know, man. Oprah's like the the the, the real deal around here. You never met her. Never met. Her. Have you met Oprah? No. Okay, I I'm don't think say, so. If you met Oprah, wait, wait, man, you Paulie, were gonna have to talk. I thought did I, I met her in Los Angeles. Did I? At that direct TV thing, we we oh were, yeah, we yeah, didn't really yeah, talk. Yeah, you we, guys did. We were amongst. Oprah. I was up on stage. Yes. where Oprah was listening. We to were me. in the same room as her. Yeah. Oprah listened to you. Yes, she did. She cried. No. Yes, you're, she did. You're lying. And, I, I don't. You're okay. You're now. You're now. You're playing game. And I said, "You get a car, and you get a car," and that's where she got it from. Me. Well, we were talking about this the other day because I'm a big Maury fan. We watch Maury in the green room every day at 12 o'clock. It's, it's, just, it's something that I brought to the – I took from the league and I brought here to NFL Network to help the culture. Um, it was a little dry when I first got here, but now we're, we're kind of getting back on track. But, you know, imagine if you were a person that went to Oprah and, like – because I guess every four out of five, every fifth episode, she does like this dry episode where she used to. It was just like, oh, we're going to talk about blah, blah, blah. And she doesn't give out any gifts. Imagine if you were one of those those people in, this, in the audience. I would be pissed off. <laughs> I'm coming to get something, Oprah. Don't, don't, don't. You just gave away cars. You're not, I mean, you're not going to give me a thing? Come you, on. You now. get wisdom. You get Exa- wisdom. I don't, I don't want that. I'll find that somewhere else. I need a whip. Uh, good to t- <laughs> it's good to talk to you again. I appreciate it. This is, this, is, this is twice in a month. What are we doing here? 
Uh, starting to build a relationship up again. There we go. We're working, man. Keep- well, I appreciate you. Make sure everybody tunes in to Yahoo, though. It's going to be awesome. I need everyone to, to hashtag this on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, everything. Watch with the world so we can talk about this. Let's keep it. I'll be one. I'll be up early. It's going to be 630 my time on the, on the best coast. I'll be up early watching it, checking out my Jaguars, making sure that uh, they're playing at a high level, tweeting about it. So I want to tweet about it with everyone from the world. We'll keep it real by keeping it real. Thank you, Mojo. All right, Dan. See you later. Maurice Jones-Drew.